Hi everyone, it's Reverend Laurie with Unity of Ocala for our Wednesday Love Notes. And here we are smack dab in the middle of Holy Week. And I don't know about you, but join the crazy craze craze. Are any of you experiencing um, emotional issues, anxieties, meltdowns, um, anger, feelings of confusion, moodiness. Um, no, it's not just menopause, <laughs> although that might be some of it. It's happening to all ages. You know, years ago when I started in ministry, after about my third year, I was doing a lot of memorial services, especially around Easter. And I thought, this, this is weird. I wonder if this is some kind of a coincidence. I looked back through my journals. I've kept a journal every year in ministry just to kind of keep my pulse on the whole ministry thing. And at one of my ministerial meetings, the SUMA group, Suncoast Unity Ministers Association, we meet every month. I asked them, do you all feel this strange eerie ethereal stuff at Easter time? Like I'm doing a lot of memorial services, a lot of counseling. Um, a lot of people just like it's a triple dipple full moon and they just started laughing. And I was like, am I missing something? Did I not catch something in the last semester of ministerial school? I said, no, it's the Easter crazies. What's that about? Well, we went around the room and shared. There were about 25 of us. And we shared our Easter experiences. And we came to the conclusion that something indeed happens around this time of the year when there is so much spiritual energy, so much tradition, so much um, focus on resurrection and miracles and uh, just the whole life cycle. And we came to the conclusion also that the veil gets very thin at this time of year. And folks kind of shed their earthly coats and kind of go back and forth. The spiritual world kind of opens up this new or unusual vortex. And if you pay very close attention to it and don't fall into the crazies, there you might experience something very deep and profound. I do find that when I prepare for a memorial service around this time of the year especially, I am easier to connect with perhaps the energy of a loved one or the energy of that one who has just passed, or at least I get a clearer idea of how they would want to be represented at their celebration service. So there is, I believe, something to this, this thinning of the veil. So I encourage you to observe how you're feeling, what you're going through, what those around you are going through. Take some time. This is Holy Week. Take some time each day in deep meditation and prayer and ask, what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say? And to whom? Or any question that's on your mind, call on your spiritual guides. Let this time of year be a full, holy resurrection for you, a personal resurrection. Charles Fillmore, I love what he says about this final Wednesday in our journey to the Garden of Gethsemane. This is the 37th day of Lent. It's called Holy Communion. We're going to go into deeper detail about this on Friday. We're going to be having Holy Communion physically at the church in the way of a small sacred gathering. But he writes, as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and broke it. And he gave it to the disciples and said, take eat, this is of my body. And he took a cup and gave thanks and gave to them saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the covenant. Now in 
Mid-Eastern ancient times, the idioms that were used could be very confusing to modern European and Westerners because it doesn't really make any sense. What did Jesus mean by breaking bread and eating it? This is my body. How gross is that? Take this wine and drink it. It is my blood. That just is absurd and it turns people off. But a new, near Easterner in ancient times would not consider that a turn off. That would be an extraordinary honor for to eat a loved one or to say, I take in. It's not really I'm eating my mother and father like a cannibal. It's in, I'm ingesting their wisdom. I'm internalizing their teachings, their vital life forces. So the words used in Aramaic were tr roughly translated in I drink and eat, but it's more of I consume and absorb the lessons, the love, the joy, the light. That's what Jesus was telling his followers. Take this bread. Bread was a sacred, sacred ritual item in Mideastern times from the times of the Exodus and before. It was one of the first products that man was physically able to make out of grain. And every ancient culture has its own national original bread. It's a sacred part of our existence. And when he broke it, he opened up his earthly teachings and understanding. That represents the manifest of God. The bread is the manifestation of the energy of God. And he said, take this in, this manifestation of me, this manifestation of the Christ in you, and take it into you so that you become it. And take this wine, wine also, very expensive, it was a treasure. It still is in those ancient regions, and it symbolizes energy and life force. It comes from the earth, from the fruit of the earth, the best of the earth. It is refined, and when that's taken in, that represents the energy of God, the life force, the ideas, the creative force, the life of God. So that takes on a whole new meaning when we partake of Holy Communion. We set an intention to take in the manifestation of Christ and be that living body of that extraordinary servant. And we take in the energy and light of God and use that to flow that light into the masses. It's an exciting, exciting assignment. Charles goes on with this Holy Communion Wednesday to say, The first step in drinking and eating of the body and blood is to resolve this whole scripture back to its primal idea. The only way to appropriate these ideas is through the very highest activity in mind and prayer. And that's what we do during a Holy Communion service in unity. We take these ideas in. We allow them to manifest in us. The benefit of taking Holy Communion is the establishing of our acceptance of the Christ within our mind and heart. We are inviting and accepting it. We blend our minds with the Father mind and there is a harmonizing of every fiber in our body with the Christ body, which is life and light. We are recognizing our oneness through this communion. As our mind and heart are cleansed of untrue thoughts and beliefs, and as we feed on living ideas, our body takes on the life and light of our divinity and eventually becomes a living light. And he affirms, God's pure life and substance are constantly renewing and rebuilding this body temple, my body temple. That's exciting. That's exciting. So your assignment for the rest of this week, heading into Good Friday, God Friday, and the resurrection, is to take time each day and go within. Listen to your thoughts. Listen to your feelings. Pay attention to what you are focusing on or obsessing on. 
just observe you and become more and more willing each day leading up to the resurrection to determine and establish how and who you are resurrecting in you. I'm going to leave our time this Wednesday with a prayer for Lent that I found in our Best Loved Unity Poems by Myrtle Borst Shepherd. Be thou my bread, great God above. Be thou my strength through night and day. Pour forth thy sweet red wine of love. Overflow the goblet of my heart in thy all generous way. Grant me a part with thee in all that is good. Let me live fearlessly in Christ as we all should. Have a blessed holy week. I'll see you Friday at 11 o'clock for our small sacred gathering where my granddaughter Kinsley will serve us communion through the child Christ comes. I love you. God loves you. We will see you Friday, 11 o'clock. Bye-bye.